So greetings, friends. I've got with me Father Altman. Look We've who I'm with. Look who I'm oh blessed my, to be with. Oh my gosh! Yes, again, we get we get to be together again. I know. God I just, bless so, him. You bless me. Thank he, you. He's my favorite priest. He just blessed a picture today, and I'm just so lucky. I can't that wait beautiful to cross hang. with all those oh, glo- those yeah medals with medals. the sacred yes, medals. Yes. yes. It was incredible. Yes. I've never seen something like that I before. know. They yeah. handmade it. Where'd you find it? it? Oh, okay. So, well, there you yes, go. So, yes, it's called it. MakeJoy.com, folks. But okay. anyway, yeah. so yes. we heard today at the yes. Coalition for Canceled Priests yes. Conference, very sadly, that Bishop Strickland was a little bit under investigation. They sent out two... Uh, bishops. Yeah, what do they call them? Visitors. They call oh. them visitors. You might as well call them Gestapo. <laughs> it's called an. You ap- listen. You 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 know me. So if you ask me a question, <gasps> I love it. I okay. want him to just yeah. tell it like it is. Yeah. An apostolic visitation. Yeah, apostolic visitation, uh, also known as uh, Bergoglio Gestapo. Yeah. And- yeah. And, you know, and, and why do you think that happened? Yeah, so I can tell you exactly why it happened. Yeah. You tell me one other bishop in this country who has stood up. He's the only one that who has called out James Martin for his homo uh, agenda. Uh, the only one who has, who has stood up for against the, uh, the transgender, the, the, the freak show yeah. that it is. Yeah. The, these people are freaks. You know what they, they, the, the sad thing is? They loathe themselves. When you see those pride parades, they loathe themselves. Because if you had pride, if you actually had pride, like God-blessed pride in yourself, you would dress with modesty and decency because you'd realize you were a, a child of God. And you wouldn't be going down the street dressed in angel wings and thongs, like if you're a man. Exactly. Right? Uh, you would recognize that God, who created us... Uh, she, can I say this? Yeah, please. So, All right, so... What's at the heart of this that they won't admit, the bottom line is this, is that uh, there's such a brokenness and woundedness within them. I'm being, I'm being nice now because sometimes I just get mad because you're just leading lambs no, astray. No, because we love them. But we love them. What's, what's pro- the problem is, is in and of themselves, so like Lady Gaga, I said that earlier, right? Yeah. That, that God created them, boys and girls, men and women, XX or XY. God created them, and God does not make mistakes. He's perfect, and he looks at them in their perfection as a boy or a girl. There's the world, and the evil in the world has somehow hurt them, has somehow wounded them, and that they look in the mirror, and they can't even love themselves. And so what they do is they deny that, like this book, Bishop Sheen said this, they deny the existence of God, atheists, not because they don't think God might be there, but this is their thinking, is that if God is all-powerful, all-loving, and he can fix anything, that I can't accept that God is because why am I hurting? If God, if even God doesn't love me, I'm not worth, it's, life is not worth living. So they, they look at themselves in the mirror and they say, even God can't, God can't be because God doesn't love me. Because if God was, if God was, if God is, he would have helped me through this pain, through this agony. And so they have to deny the existence of God. And so what they do is, and, and so they look in the mirror and they can't accept themselves for who they are, for the, for the being in essence that they are, for the XX, because Women are XX, 75 trillion cells in their body, XX. Men are XY. Bruce Jenner is a perfect example. Exactly. He, he has daddy issues. He even admitted it. You look in the mirror and you can't accept yourself for the man you are and, and find peace and joy and love as the man you are, in Bruce Jenner's case. So, so these broken people consequently act out. So the problem is this, is that this is not what we're hearing from the hierarchy not at They're all. They're just, we have to walk with them. Well, no, how do you walk with them? Accompany them. Accompany them, yes. It, you're not saying, I need to accompany you to bring you Christ's healing love. To let you know that God loves you and he created you just as you are. Right? He didn't make a mistake. Lady Gaga had it right. Yes. He created you a boy. He created you a girl. That the bishops of the United States aren't saying that because 88% of them, as I'm told, are homosexuals themselves who are so unhappy with themselves that they have to deny the truth of God's creation and how he made them. 
So that's why they're not supporting them. And Bishop Strickland speaks the truth. And just as, look, why do we think they're picking on, on Bishop Strickland? They picked on Jesus. Yeah. And what did Jesus teach us? If the, at Last Supper, he's telling the apostles, if they hated me, they'll hate you. If they persecuted me, they're going to persecute you. If they kill me, they're going to kill you. So what are they doing to Bishop Strickland? They're attacking him. They're persecuting him. They want to they cancel him. So all you need to know about truth versus a lie is Bishop Strickland is speaking the truth. Right? They can't say he's not speaking the truth. And he's doing it with love. He's doing it with love. Yeah, but way more so than me. No, right? Bishop I mean, Strickland is love. cool. Total love. So that tells you that Bergoglio, Supic, Donald Wuerl, every other cardinal, and, and what something like about 96% of the bishops in the United States are diabolical from hell. And they're persecuting Bishop Strickland as much as they persecuted Jesus. Remember, I, I talked tonight John about John the, the Baptist. Baptist. I talked about him. What? Not one Sanhedrin stood up for John the Baptist, even though he spoke the truth. So well, that's what happens when you speak the truth. Don't count on the bishops to stick up for you. Those brood of vipers, they're not sticking up for you. They're not. No. no. So, so you asked me about so Bishop Strickland. So you heard Strickland. it, folks. Yeah. You heard it. What can yeah. we do just in the last right. 30 seconds? Yeah. What can we as the lady do for Bishop Strickland, for yeah. you, right. for all of the people who are courageous and right. stand up Here's, for the so fullness I'm, of the faith? I can answer that question. The, the answer that applies is not a, a good answer to most people because we're human beings and we want to say, if I go out and mow the lawn, when I get done three hours later, I'm going to see a mow the lawn. We see cause and effect, right? In God's world, our causes and effects are not so closely tied as I mow the lawn and now it's mowed. In God's world, we make sacrifice and you don't always see the benefit of making the sacrifice. So I listen on Good Friday, on Holy Saturday, in the time in the tomb, the apostles did not see the benefit of the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross. Neither will we. Who do we think we are? Well, we're entitled to see. If I do this, I better see this God, right? But what we can do is this. The more we sacrifice, the more we practice our faith, study our faith, read sacred scripture, read the saints, actually pray, and a lot of our prayer should be just shutting up and listening. Over time, we will be transformed into the image and likeness of Christ. And when that happens, when somebody comes along, he can, when somebody comes along, eternal soul's at risk, God can call us off the bench and put us in the game to save that eternal soul that we have been preparing for, that he has prepared us for. Nobody will do that because they don't see the immediate cause and effect. We have such a short-term view on things. What we do today might help somebody five years later, and God knows this, and he gives you the opportunity. And if you don't practice, you're, we're teammates, right? Yes. So if I don't practice my faith, I'm letting you down because you're my teammate. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, right? When you're in sports, you don't practice. You don't show up for practice, you get kicked off the team. What do people think God's going to do? He's going to kick you off the team because you didn't do your job. You didn't do your practice. Every day, you have to show up for practice. And, and, here, and, and here you go, because people say, well, that's still an ambiguous term. No, it's not. Jesus made it clear when he said to the apostles, could you not spend one hour with me? If you're not spending one hour in prayer, sacred scripture, reading of the saints, and just shutting up and listening, if you don't spend an hour a day, what makes you, if you can't spend an hour a day with God today, what makes you think you'll spend an hour, you want to spend an eternity with him, right? That's true. Amen. Amen. So, so here's how you do it. If you want to know how to change the world, if you want to know how to change the people in your life, you want to know how to change yourself into a life of peace and joy in the midst of suffering, one hour a day. Oh, that, there beautiful. it is. It's, there I didn't it make is, that up. folks. There it is. Thank you, yeah. Father. Well, God bless you. God bless you, everybody. Yeah. Is he not the most wonderful she's priest? My, she's my hero. Pray for <laughs> Father Altman, folks. Uh, yeah, pray, for for and for pray for Bishop Strickland and all these courageous priests. God bless you. God bless you all.